and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Good evening from Georgia. Your magic is back on. We're live. And that means that um, once again, we're going to be talking, we're going to be playing, we're going to be reviewing, and hi, 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 hi. Yes, yes, we forgot to change the name of the live stream. So, um, tonight, <laughs> we are finally going to be talking about Huan Longshi. Uh, and uh, the pure awesomeness that uh, his games were. And uh, that means that our editing and, and the course about him and about his games and about his life is almost done. We will be releasing this course very soon. Uh, we are as tired of waiting as you guys are, I'm sure. And it's almost ready. Now it's in, in the final stages of creating, uh, of uh, just polishing the quizzes and making sure that the, that the subtitles work and everything works. But the major editing and the, the, the entire course is pretty much ready. And that means that tonight is going to be a special stream. Uh, it's not just uh, talking about Hall and like, um, how amazing he is, but uh, we are, just give me a second here. So we we are going to be um, we are good morning good morning well yes good morning evening morning slash evening um, we will take a look at one of the games that he played uh, that Wallen she played and I, I picked a very very special one one of my personal favorites and it is probably safe to say that I'm I'm not exactly satisfied with the with the Wallen she course and the reason for that is that. I like this player so much, and I, I just I can talk about his, his games and I can review his games pretty much forever. And and being like choosing the best and like the the the, the games that I really want to show and share with you guys uh, in this course was an absolute hell of of a, a like of a deal of a task because I, I I really had to struggle and pick something out of out of all of the games that I wanted to show. And um, yeah, so we did the best we could, and out of those 107 games that he, that are still exist uh, existent today, I picked several. And tonight I'm going to be re reviewing one more, which is not in the course. So we'll get to that. And also, I'm uh, we're going to be showing you a teaser trailer, which is finally ready. So uh, we'll get to that, but before uh, before before any of this, uh, maybe let's play a warm-up game. He's getting kind of cold here in Batumi. You know, believe it or not, who would have thunk <laughs> that Batumi was not as warm as they told? It's raining again, the whole day rain today, and I'm cold. So let's let's play a warm-up game, nine by nine, very fast, and then we'll get to the game review. So anybody, show of hands. A quick 9x9. Nine nine. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. Come forward. Let's play a game. You see, like two months ago, I was, I was drinking this tea, and I was like almost forcing myself to drink it because uh, it, was, it was hot, and I was drinking hot tea. But today, it is actually justified. Hi, hi, yeah. Anton, oh, again, it's like nobody steps forward. Anton is here to save the day. It's like, okay, nobody, nobody wants to play. Okay, I will play. All right, um, all right, let's, let's give him, let's give him 15 more seconds. And then if nobody, nobody steps forward and raises a hand, uh, yeah, we can, we can play. And okay, 15, 14, uh, 3, 2, 1. When was the last time we played? Well, last time was our correspondence game, I think. Um, right? You, you forced me to play a correspondence game, and we did. Uh, and before that, on the stream, we played a game when, oh, 9x9, nine nine? I don't remember. Yeah, uh, it was back in Tver, but uh, back in Russia. But 13x13, uh, 13 13 we played when we did a call live on, on Twitch. All right, nine by nine it is. Uh, nine by nine it is. Let me let me let me challenge you. Let me challenge you, and then we'll see. Challenge Anton. I have to make a uh, like a special button on OGS here. Like, 
challenge Anton. <laughs> just to, out of all the challenges, just to a quick, a quick and easy access to to Anton. Oh wait. You are in my friends. You should be in my friends. What? Let me. Let me find you. Okay. Challenge. How much time? Let's make it. Let's make it quick. So I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna say ten minutes. Right. Quick. Not really quick, but okay. I'm gonna be just assuming that I will talk, and uh, eat up a lot of the time. Okay, call me, handicap, uh, okay, no handicap. Anton, do you want some handicap on 9x9? Nine nine? Yayomi, and I think we're done. No? No handicap, okay. No handicap, says Anton. Uh, stand... Yeah, yeah, so cheeky, yeah. <laughs> I think I sent you a Game started. Okay. Hey, line guy, Sai. How's it going? All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm black. Maybe we'll start a pre Oh, prediction. Uh, uh, can, we, can we make a prediction? I mean, Anton, as much as I'd love to make a prediction, even if I knew how to make a prediction on, on Twitch, which I don't, but uh, I mean, if I were white, I would make an, an easy prediction, but okay, I'm black. Ah. I'm starting to hate black on 9x9. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was easy. Help Vadim create make a prediction. Vadim makes a prediction. Vadim is going to win this game. How about that prediction? D does it work? Okay. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and. Can I? Hmm. Let's go this way, actually. Greetings from Athens, Greece. Wow, that's far away. Hello, hello. And yeah, by the way, uh, line guy Sai. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hear you're going to be commenting, commentating one of the uh, one of the one of the rounds uh, next week at um, uh, next Saturday. So I, I think I'm going to be commentating round one at the Pride Go um, American tournament that uh, Gooplet has organized. And Lion Guy Sai, I think, I, I believe you're going to be commentating the second one. Yeah, doing round two. And Dwyrin is doing round three. So it's going to be <laughs> a nice little commentator's theme. So yeah, uh, I think, guys, next week, uh, making an early announcement, like a very early announcement. Next week, uh, I'm going to be commentating the American uh, tournament. So there won't be a Go Magic stream, but I'm going to be at the on the AGA channel together with Gooplet, uh, also known as Eva, and she's going to be asking me questions. I'm going to be commentating not just one game, but like we're, we're, we're going to take a look at some of the games that everyone's playing. Maybe some Q level play uh, games, maybe uh, top boards as well. To try to explain what's happening there. So it's going to be fun. Yay! Uh huh. All right. So what's happening here? Um, can I kick it? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Let's kick it. It's like this old school uh, hip hop song. Like, can I kick it? And then the crowd is supposed to say, "Yes, you can." Can I kick it? Yes, you can. Wait, um, now what can I do? This move looks pretty big. Uh, if I play g4, that's like a very, very sante sort of like move. Let's 
play this one and see how it goes. Because I feel like if I play h3, the sliding large knight's move into the corner, Anton is definitely going to ignore that. But this one, he can't ignore. So, and now, I think it's time to play endgame. <laughs> like, four moves into the game, time, to, time for Yose. How can I play endgame here? Hmm. I'm just thinking, is it going to be so unfair of me if I play b5 right now? <laughs> and, 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 the, and the biggest question is actually, can Anton live in my corner after this? What if I Hane? I think Hane is better. Yeah, let's do Hane. Well, Hane kind of gives me a better endgame in the future. I, I have better moves here around the first line. Uh, and possibly if, if I get some, yeah, yeah, of course. That was to be expected. Well, I don't think I have a choice here. I probably need to Hane from, from this side. So let's do that and see how Anton's going to save this stone. Yeah, speaking of next Saturday, um, I'm kind of a little uh, anxious about it because like, every time I get to review some games here live on stream, um, typically, of course, I would take a look at the games before the stream and I would uh, do a quick review and see what the, the major points are, like what, what I want to emphasize on stream. So I'm not like jumping into the game like randomly and just like, okay, let's just take a look at this game and see what happens here. So I, I think it, ma it makes m much more sense to kind of do a, a small review. No, prediction. What? Uh, um, prediction. But I mean, Lion Guy Sai just told me how to like arrange a prediction, but I don't know what it is. I mean, what what what's going to happen once I type that? Like, it allows people to predict uh, who's going to win this game. Oh, wait, there was a prediction. Mike, was there a prediction? Was there a prediction anywhere? Anton says there was a prediction. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I can't see it. Anyway, uh, oh, so if I Atari now, I think Anton wants to counter Atari and, 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 oh, and he will capture my stone. What a naughty boy, this Anton. At the same time, if I just connect, he will live. Well, I don't think I have much choice here. I probably need to just simply Atari and let him, let him take that stone. So it turns out that my G4 stone that I put there well in advance, it's just going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to get captured and uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. Oh, someone just followed us. And, uh, and every, I just feel like everyone who follows Go Magic is just uh, has those unpronounceable names <laughs> it's like is it the legend when t so then uh, when oh is it the legend 27 that's a uh, like once there are no spaces it's so hard to read that okay and yeah welcome and claire yang welcome to welcome to go magic thanks for following and uh well I think I don't have much choice here. I, I, I just have pretty much have to capture, right? I have to capture, and Anton will capture my... Sidingo, hi. Or I can also connect. But I feel like connecting is even worse. So I, I, I just take it. I just take it. Why do I feel like I'm losing this game? Yeah, 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 this, this co. This co is 
unpleasant. Actually, wait. I mean, in a normal game, AI teaches us that when, whenever this sort of co appears uh, at the like at the beginning of the game, you shouldn't even like be scared of it and just ignore this co and like don't connect. But here on nine by nine, if the game is so short, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I have to connect. Otherwise, I might not be able to find the co thread. My name is definitely pronounceable, says Claire. Yeah, yeah, right. Of course, Claire Yang is easy. And e5 is a good move for black. e5 is a good move for black. Well, e5, well, right now my stone is in Atari, and I need to decide what I'm going to do about that. Do I connect? And Anton will uh, probably add some stones and capture my, my stone. Or do I fight? Do I fight this co with f5? There's no co says uh, says uh, Mike with Go Magic Live. Um, wait, what? It's not a co. It's not a co, says everybody. Play co for channel content. <laughs> okay, wait, but if I, if I cut. Oh, it's really not a co. Oh my goodness. Capture Atari. Oh, what? I'm, I'm being stupid. Thank you to, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody, like, thank you, Tsumigo. And uh, Vadim is struggling. What a, what an idiot. Oh, wrong cut? Really? Really? I was supposed to cut the other way? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Why can't connect here? Well, I can do, I can do this, right? I can do the Atari. I can do H5, but I can also do this. I mean, the question is, white can't connect. White won't be able to connect after e e6. But if I Atari here, I don't think there's anything here. Let's do this. Just for the stream. In an actual game, I'll probably uh, I'll probably chicken out and I'll play um, e6. But just for the stream. Let's let's try this one. See if if um, if there's anything that I've missed. Thank you. Have a nice stream. Thank you. It's gonna be a nice stream. Yeah. And right after the game, uh, right after this game, uh, we're gonna take a, we're gonna see the the trailer, I think, and then we're gonna review uh, some games, and then Huangongshi, finally. So a lot of uh, a lot of awesome goodies coming coming tonight. <laughs> okay, yeah, this this is exactly why I was thinking that maybe it could have been better for me to uh, Atari from from this side play at e6 because now I'm kind of am I forced to capture? Wait, I'm not forced to capture right now, right? I'm not forced. I can do... It's a bad position for me, says Anton. Prediction. All right, let's, let's just do... Let's do this. Let's get uh, very, very aggressive here. Anton is replying with thank you as if he's he's the one streaming. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thank, thanks everyone. I mean, I, I might not have found this, uh, this solution without you guys. Uh, so I, I could have lost this game right there. But now with your help, oh, okay, wait. Can I just extend? 
understand. Wait a minute. Yeah, I can expand. What a, what a pleasant feeling of capturing three stones at the same time. Or was it two stones? You have one. Thank you. OK, thanks for the game. Uh, I'm not sure if prediction, if, 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 if there was a prediction or if it worked, but uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll fix that for next time. All right, let's go back. And so just give me a second here. OK. And wait, I'm, I'm just preparing for the review, for the game review in the future. And review, OK. There you go. All right. So, uh, Anton, thanks for the game. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, thank you for. No, 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 no need to say sorry. I mean, if it, if the game was long, it could have been you know dragging it out. The stream would go long, and you know everybody's getting bored. It's like where's the where's the teaser of the new course, Vadim? Oh no, Vadim is still playing the game. He can't show you the teaser. But now the game is over, and we can watch the teaser and then talk about the new course. So, so thank you, Anton. What a, a smart. Smart decision <laughs> of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a quick game. Uh, so without further ado, let, let me show you the, uh, the trailer that we made uh, of the course. It's, uh, the course is not coming for maybe for another week and a half or a week, I would say. But the teaser, let's, uh, let's take a watch. And uh, oh. Uh, if there's anything wrong with the sound, because like last time we tried to watch it and there was a, everyone said that the sound didn't work, we tried to fix it. So hopefully everything works this time. But if anything, just uh, let me know in the chat. Okay. Here we go. Here's a story of a mysterious Chinese player from a distant past. You will see the style he had, the games he played, and the problems that he composed. This is ancient Chinese Go the way you've never seen it before. Those games were different. They were not so strategic and they were all about tactical complications, capturing races, running around, making shape, and fighting, 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 and more fighting. This is the story of Huang Mengshi. There you go. <laughs> I hope the sound was okay. I hope everything else was okay. Uh, wow, says Anton. Because <laughs> I think Anton hasn't hasn't seen it yet. Because uh, uh, even though we were like the whole the whole team and everything, but I, I I don't think anyone at Go Magic has seen a trailer yet. So it's this is the actual first time that we're watching it live. So you guys are watching with Anton and I think Xenia and uh, the entire other Go Magic team back home together with us. Intense. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, we heard things fine, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Fantastic. Nice. OK. Yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, to revoke, we're, we're going to be reviewing uh, what Intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, this course, like I said, it's not, it doesn't have the same um, 
intensity of a story as, as the Joe, of course, as the blood vomiting game, because that story is just so incredible. I don't think there's any, anything quite like it in the entire Go history. But I mean, we're trying to find some jewels here and there. Uh, we'll watch it again. We'll watch it again. Don't worry. Be right before we get into Huang Shi, uh, the Huang Shi game, we'll watch this again. So uh, no worries. Just, uh, just, you have to wait. Um, and yeah, but the, there's so little information about uh, so little information about Huang Shi anywhere. Like searching through the Chinese sources, through all of those Chinese websites and uh, English language websites. It doesn't matter. There's very little stuff uh, uh, about him. So it's just the entire course is mostly uh, maybe 20% story and 80% uh, just admiring the games that Huang Shi played and admiring the style and the, 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 the finesse with which he carried and performed and just played every move in those games. We'll go over some uh, Dosuko analysis in 20 minutes, so I won't be able to, to see this uh, live. I'll have to watch the... Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, there's going to be a recording, surely. Uh, we'll upload it on YouTube, so no worries, no worries. You, you, you're not going to miss it. But hey, and good luck with your uh, with, the dos with the Dosaku uh, review. So let's uh, uh, not waste any time, and let's j jump right into the game reviews. We have two games reviews submitted uh, for us tonight, and we're going to start with the first one. Let's jump right to it. Uh, this is going to be the, the game played by Grandfather Frog, who just said cool in the chat. Let's take a look. All right, so this is a game. Uh, Grandpa Frog is playing black. Let's take a look. Um, as always, I'm not going to be focusing on like the entire game, but I just, uh, I'll just show you some of the highlights and some of the key points that I think were crucial in this game and that decided the outcome. So, um, so that's a six Q game. Both players are six Q. Um, this is not a joystick. I mean, this, this move is definitely, we, we, we play this, for example, after, after this, in this joystick key. But uh, here, and that's why we're really, <laughs> we're, this is exactly why we're thinking about making this uh, basic Joseki course because uh, because a lot of people they even though this is such a simple position and you've probably seen this like a thousand times but uh, still a lot of people start to improvise and sometimes the improvisation just goes a little bit off um, even though this is fine I mean taking the corner is fine here but if I was black I would probably think that oh, okay since white is uh, kind of uh, low here I would just cover and just go for the outside which is with this outside wall influence is going is going to be combined really well with uh, with a lower with the low Chinese um, that is the Chinese Fuseki that is on the board right now. But anyway, that's not a mistake. Uh, some end game moves here which are not necessary in in the opening, like all these exchanges. Second line definitely there are bigger moves on the board. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And um, here, um, as black, you see that this stone, now that it, this stone is hurt, you probably want to help it. And that's understandable. But if you want to help it, then I suggest that you, you, you don't uh, do this directly. Because this, this is, I mean, this is the, the most tempting and the most obvious uh, uh, response in this sort of situation. But at the same time, this makes you heavy immediately. You have two stones instead of one. Now this is the, 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 those two stones are the object for your opponent to attack. Like once your opponent strikes, you will have to save these two stones. Basically, you just told your opponent that you are, you are going to be saving them. And then, for example, right now uh, in the game, white just plays here, which is strange because he's jumping right into the black moyo, so deep. But um, if white just plays something like this right now, now black is going to be facing... Hey, oh, the loving sun just, oh, thank you. And uh, welcome, you wonderful watchers of the loving sun. Yeah, we're, we're reviewing one of, the, uh, one of our subscribers' game. And then there's going to be one more. And then we're going to be talking about, uh, about Huang Longshi, about the wonderful Chinese player from the, uh, from the 17th century. But we'll get to that. And uh, that, that, 
That's going to come in about, I would say, I don't know, 40 minutes. So uh, for now, we're just doing a couple of game reviews. And uh, yeah, uh, Hobbs, welcome. And Loving Sun, welcome. Welcome as well. Thank you for following. So yeah, the, you see the black is a little bit um, a little bit heavy here, and now black would be uh, it would be kind of difficult to save to save those two stones. I mean, definitely black can manage. Black can start doing this sort of uh, low moves or maybe attaching here. Black can manage and and and, and live there, but that's not going to be uh, a comfortable uh, sort of game. This is not what you want to be doing. Uh, in the early opening. You want to be you know, expanding and taking points, but instead you're being forced to live. So my point is when something like this happens, you either ignore this, or if you don't, then this is the sort of move you should be thinking of. It's, it's much lighter, and, and you know, in the future, if white, it, it's, it's more difficult to surround. If white strikes for, from here, you can just jump out, forgetting about that M, M17 stone. You care about the major, the major part of this group. At the same time, for example, if, if this happens, again, you don't care about this one stone. You save the, the biggest part. This is a little bit heavy. So white jumps right in, start, starts to live. A, again, not what you want to be doing. And then now white is doing pretty much the same thing. White is jumping into the Moyo and trying to, well, trying to um, feel miserable there. And this, again, this is not uh, the right direction probably. Uh, a much better direction would be to cover from the outside. Of course, you always want to take the outside. The outside is, this gives you so much more power. So just cover it up like this. This, look how natural this, 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 this feels. Like the white stones are being covered inside. Of course, white can escape, but uh, white definitely won't be able to make two eyes here. So white will have to jump outside, and you're going to be just uh, making your territory naturally. But in the game, you're just taking those uh, few points in the upper right, allowing white to uh, make shape here. And then this, this, maybe. Um, a bit of a mistake here. Maybe this, this wasn't really necessary. You could just uh, maybe expand, but okay. Fine. Cut. Live. Okay, and here. You know, basically, when this sort of situation happens in your game, and like uh, everything in, in just in everything you know, the, your whole Go experience just tells you block. Block, block. You have to block. You have to block. And 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 typically in this sort of case, situation, you don't really have a choice. Even if it feels like something doesn't work, you just you just have to block because otherwise, um, white gets out of here. I mean, you pay the price for this. You got cut off, and uh, and, and you pay this price to surround white, to enclose white here. And now white is trying to get out, and you just let him out. No, no, you don't do that. Block him. Let him let him struggle. Let him let him live. I, I'm not sure if White can live there or not. Perhaps he can. Maybe this move will live. But the whole point is that now White is inside, and you have this wall, and you have enough time to take care of your weaknesses. Maybe connect here right now, and now Black feels better. Black definitely feels better. But after this, White just slices through you. Ah, that just feels so ah oh, so so bad for Black. Of course, you're still making points. You're making points. And white adds another move here, not necessary for, for white. And again, uh, I've, I mean, I'm kind of criticizing you here. But at the same time, this is the sort of move that I've played many, many, many times when I was, uh, well, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, when I was a Q player as well. So this is the sort of move that I can really relate to. Uh, I, I definitely understand where it's coming from. And yeah, it, it feels like this is the, the eye shape move. I'm going to attack, and I'm going to, I'm going to kill white and force white to live. But look, 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 look. White is not uh, like all of these points here, right? White can, white can easily come out here. White is not surrounded. And if white is not surrounded, then what are you trying to attack? How are you trying to kill him there? You can't, you can't really kill, obviously. So you're just making a second line move. That, that gives you no territory, 
and white is already outside. So if, let's imagine that if, if the situation was like this, now that's different. Now you can probably play there if, if time, and, and just uh, take that eye shape away from him and force him to make two eyes. Okay, that would be understandable. But without that, I don't think you should do that. White jumps out very comfortably. Again here, comfortable life, um, probably this is a little bit um, shy as a move, maybe um, this sort of shape is uh, called for, uh, Kema, the knight's move. But again, uh, you're still building the wall, but you're not really attacking anybody. White can live at any point. White can, anytime white can just play there, or it, there's just too much space for white to die here. And here, white makes uh, an exchange mistake, uh, just, just as if by magic, uh, instead of connecting here, which would have been correct, white just connects there and allows you to cut. So good for black. You cut, and this is definitely good for black here. Very nice technique from white, actually. Uh, not like uh, not dying with the entire group, but like managing to save something, sa salvaging something. And this is small, right? This is this is definitely too small. Uh, I mean, you're not expecting white to connect here. You're not expecting white. You're not really expecting, right? Because of course, white is not going to just uh, connect like this, and then you play this. Oh, the group is dead. Oh, what? It's so beautiful. Isn't it lovely? But it's not going to happen, of course. This, this is wishful thinking. So of course, white is going to ignore you. So maybe, um, maybe just play this right away. Just play this and, and see how white is going to. So white is going to have to do something like this, you know, hoping for this sort of co, which feels like the kind of co you can actually win. But that feels like taking one, one small stone or a couple of stones and allowing white to live at the bottom. So white lives here. White is alive, almost alive. And actually here, there was a, a very interesting moment that, uh, the, but this is a, a bit of a Tisuji thing and also life and death thing. So you play here, white lives, and you Tenuki. And this is pretty much the last thing I'm gonna, um, I'm going to mention in this game. And uh, actually, um, wait, is it here? I think this is going to just stay like this. This position at the bottom is going to stay like this for the entire duration of the game. But look, if we go back here, instead of all this, um, I think what has this move? And uh, how, how is white going to respond to this? The white shape is bad here. So if, if white connects, now you can just do this, right? You don't even need to uh, play the co. You just connect like this, and the white only has one eye. White connects, you connect. White is dead. So if, um, if after this, I don't know, white can probably play this. Can white play this? Hope for some sort of co? Maybe. No, probably no co here, just like this, and uh, this gets captured. So white is dying here. After this move, white is dying. But this is this is the sort of move that is very easy to miss. It's uh, it's not an obvious like pff, kill the group kind of move. So, but yeah, try to be more sharp when you're playing a game. And last thing, uh, last thing here, when you're attacking, um, when you're attacking, maybe it's better to attack low because it, it puts more pressure on the corner. Uh, if you attack high, it gives white a chance to just do this. And then, for example, after this Joseki, white is easily alive in the corner, and you get these three stones, which are kind of useless because white already has a stone at d10. So if white didn't have the stone, you would have a lot of influence. But right now, you don't need influence. You have a lot of, you have plenty of influence already in this game. You don't need more. You need cash, actually. Uh, you have so many walls that n n n now you just need to turn these walls into territory. So probably uh, 
For example, even if you make a wall here, then you should be thinking of like, how can I invade maybe like this? And if, if white, for example, does the same thing, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Now we're trying to attack this stone at uh, D10. Hello, who are you? Hello, who are you? Uh, my name is Vadim, and uh, I am part of the Go Magic team. We are working on the Go Magic platform, which is a platform with interactive video courses and um, all sorts of materials and uh, skill trees for all sorts of practice of Go. And this is a Go Magic live stream. So right now we're reviewing uh, one of our subscribers' games. So turning your influence into, into, into some sort of cash. This is something that you probably should be thinking of. But instead, uh, in, instead, you make a wall here. <laughs> and this wall is just, if, now it feels like you're actually making points from your influence. And that is not the kind of thing you should be, uh, we typically need to, like when you have influence, you, you don't try to make, make walls with it, like uh, make territory with it. You use this, these walls to somehow attack. So your point is to somehow separate, separate, separate white in some way. For example, again, here, here, this, anything now. Maybe even this approach is fine. And whatever white does, you try to separate this single stone at A, separate the stone and try to attack and, and, and drive it toward this wall and try to kill it. That's uh, what you probably should, like the kind of plan you want to be making. And this is it. This is it for, the, uh, for, the, for, for this game review. I hope I uh, shed some light on, on this position. Um, hopefully we, we saw some of the variations. And uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I, I was like, I was a little bit in, into the game and I forgot to uh, say hi to, yeah, Ed Helen, uh, thank you for following, and also uh, Ocelot, Ocelot or Ocelot, <laughs> uh, thanks for following, hi. And let's jump right through into the second game as well. Okay, 72, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, let's see the second game as well. Wait, where is it? Here. And there you go. Okay, this is a game of uh, another one of our subscribers, um, Russ, AKA Dr. Wanderer. And uh, he's playing white in his game. And let's see what was happening. Haha, <laughs> let the flogging begin. Wait, review the game. And go back. Okay. Wait, I'm forgetting about my tea. Um, I guess I'm just trying to um, somehow not let this stream continue well past midnight here, because it's always we always start the stream kind of late uh, local time. So um, trying to keep it within reasonable time boundaries. So let's take a look at this game. Um, this game is actually uh, very well played, and um, it was surprisingly challenging to find some like things to really comment on. Like say, okay, this is like a typical mistake. Never play like this. It was it was hard. So let's take a look. Uh, so Doctor Wanderer is playing white. Seems normal so far. Very normal opening. Okay, jumping into the corner, and. Uh, <laughs> and this uh, this sequence is usually played a little later in the game because this is again this feels like a bit of an end game sequence. So uh, white can probably just ignore this right now and uh, just just tenaki. Um, and this is usually not a joystick. You will like black gets the entire corner. So um, but at the same time, of course, white still gets sente. So it's fine. The normal sequence here would be to connect, but again, in this case, uh, you can hardly expect, and, and black is pushing in this, and black gets sente. So 
probably a good choice if you want to keep Sente, and you certainly do. Uh, Michael Redman just made a video on this uh, C-17 invasion. Yeah, we actually have the entire course on this uh, C-17 invasion. Uh, there's a course from uh, uh, Cho Yonu uh, uh, on Go Magic, and it's a mini course, but it's uh, it's pretty useful, I think, and it covers this particular shape. Um, what happens after this invasion? And there are three like three major options. Like this is one of them as white, and there's this one as well, and there's this one. And uh, Cho Yonu in the course explains when and how you should be thinking about uh, each one of these three options. He said white has to uh, separate at E18. Well, normally, yes. But actually, for example, in this case, like in, it, like in this game here, um, look at this position here. If white separates, then of course black is going to live there. Black is, is going to be alive in the corner. We just, that's off the table immediately. And now, if you descend at E18, then ideally, you want to get an attack on these stones. Let me mark them. So somehow, this group, you, you want to attack this. But look, it's, it's hard to attack because it's not just three stones. It's actually the entire like, black formation is on the right side. So what are you going to do? After you play this sequence, like after you connect here, and like let's say uh, this happens, and this, and this, you block, and black is alive in the corner, fine. But now, how are you going to attack? Are you going to just jump in here? Well, I don't think it's going to attack, uh, because black is so strong here. Actually, white could get in trouble here. <laughs> white could get under attack. So in this particular case, uh, I think uh, I would be tempted not to descend, not to play this move, not, not to play this move, because I don't see how I'm going to use this move in the future. So yeah, normally you're right, but uh, it's always you have, to, you have to see the circumstances. You have to see the specific situation. Um, I was reacting. I don't know uh, that invasion by heart and actually was surprised by that attack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's always the option of tenuity. As uh, Alexander Dinerstein says, if you don't know what to do, if you don't know how to respond locally, just tenuity. <laughs> and it, you know, it's, it's, it sounds a bit weird and off, but I find this advice surprisingly helpful. Because in, it, it, it definitely helps in this sort of positions. Like when you don't know how to respond to this, just don't. And uh, let your opponent worry about that. Okay, so this happened. And uh, a jump into the corner. Very, very modern. This. A very AI looking Joseki here. Also nice. I'm not sure the computer would um, agree with this move necessarily, but you know uh, we can't always listen to computers. This is a very nice reduction move. So you're, you're trying to keep black low, fine. And uh, actually, I know it's it's kind of hard to play this. Well, uh, look not modern. Look, look not modern because of the double wing. Um, well, I mean. It's still sort of early uh, in the game, but yeah, it's uh, probably about time. Now there's now the black has those double wings. Anybody, even that probably even 50 years ago, anybody would invade because it feels, just feels so good to invade in that corner, like before black gets a chance to reinforce it. So yeah, invading is necessary. But the the Joseki that is played in the corner is the one that wasn't played before. This is the Joseki that was invented by AI. Um, and right now, in this sort of shape, actually, maybe black uh, made a slight mistake here. Black, like b before reinforcing the corner, black wants to push more. Maybe, maybe do something like this to force white to escape. Because if he doesn't, and he didn't in the game, then there's this move, which looks so small, and it just it's deceptively small. It looks like it's nothing, but actually, uh, this uh, like this sort of move is. Um, is praised by computers, is praised by AI, and it's also it was also played by humans before. So it's a, a, a universally good move. Like when you can just cover the stones like this, when you make this turn, and it just makes your stones so much stronger. It's hard to appreciate it because uh, you, you can't measure how, how much stronger your stones have actually become. But trust me, they become considerably stronger, and now uh, Black's influence is reduced. Your stones cannot be attacked. But you can actually uh, like further reduce black in the future 
So this 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 is a very important move, and I think that uh, in this sort of position, you can just uh, like remember that if your opponent gives you a chance to play this, just play this. Very nice. That's why I'm thinking that Black should have prevented you from doing this. Um, so this feels like mm, trying to make territory here, but uh, I mean you're not going to be able to make territory here. Obviously, um, the, because everything is open here, so of course. Oh, black invades right here. Yeah, of course black can invade and just you're going to be left without any eyes there. Okay, you cover this. And yeah, you, you definitely want to... I mean, this is still good. This is definitely nice. But uh, this move uh, is kind of uh, bugged me for... Uh, I, I've been looking at this... Like, I've been staring at this move for like a minute. Like, why is this? What? What? How, how did white play this? Like, this, this is a very unusual shape. Uh, and... Uh, Oh, the idea was to exchange and sacrifice something, not to make territory. Okay, well, you pretty much did that. You, you uh, invaded, you gave something up, you made yourself stronger, and yeah, so you've sacrificed a little bit. So y your plan worked, but maybe this move, right? Uh, what, is, like, what is the idea behind it? I mean, the usual shape here would be something like this, right? And uh, it makes you stronger. Um, and now this white shape is just, uh, it's so thick that you you can just forget about it and never worry about it again. <laughs> also, uh, on a side note, there's this, this move, which is um, um, actually very, very important. And nobody, because it, it takes away a lot of the points from black. And it makes, uh, like in the future, if black doesn't do anything, there's this move. So it kind of, uh, it attacks black and it also separates black. So Again, looks small, but actually very big. And this move will remain unplayed for, for, for the longest time in this game. Uh, invasion here, uh, attack, another jump. And this, um, this is the sort of shape that I really hate myself. Like, like just, just personally, I don't like this, uh, this jump because I know black can do this attachment and there's no way that I'm gonna disconnect. And just because I hate the idea that black can easily connect like this, because I, I wanted to attack, right? We want to attack in the first place, and now black just connects, and there's no attack. So uh, maybe, um, maybe you could think of uh, like anything else. I mean, you don't want to do this, obviously, because it, it makes black stronger. But um, I don't know. May, maybe this it also makes black stronger. But at the same time, now black has a weakness, and if black fixes it, now we can jump. And now there's no there's no more connection, right? No more connection here. So I would, um, I mean, this is probably what I would like. One of the things that I would be thinking of. It makes white thicker, stronger. The stones are disconnected, and white is growing a moyo uh, in this in the in the in, in the lower left. Uh, so and and it's still not quite clear uh, what kind of moyo black is going to get here at the bottom because. In, in the future, um, like let's say we pass, and in the future white has, again, this move, white has uh, any sort of like reduction moves here, jumping here, so it, it's hard for black to actually turn this moyo into uh, a big territory. But let's, um, let's get back to it. Connected here. Okay. Black jumps right in there. Oh, maybe this is a, a bit strange, right? It doesn't really, uh, again, it's kind of one of those moves that uh, I, I criticize in the typical mistakes course, like when you're trying to hit your opponent from, like, from below, and it only forces your opponent to respond, of course. Of course, black plays here. I mean, this is pretty much the only, the only and obvious move, and it doesn't get you anything. So it, it feels like a very... Um, a simple exchange, but it doesn't make you stronger. It makes your opponent stronger. And it doesn't make you territory. It makes nothing. And you're still separated. And then, so I would, I would say this, this is an uh, uh, unnecessary exchange. Just, uh, just don't play it. If you want to attack these stones, well, do it right away. Just, just go for, I don't know, just play this, for example. Uh, and, 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 and force, force black to jump. Maybe, maybe this and then something like this. Of course, black will be able to get out of this, but it, it doesn't look very simple for black to maneuver out of this. So black will be forced to, you know, play some tisujis, play find some good shapes to get out of the surroundings. Um, 
But once you make black stronger like this, now it's easy, right? Now it's easy. Now black is outside, no worries. Again, second line, big, but the game is probably not at the second line bigness yet. Defending everything. Oh, this is a very strange attachment from black. And here, and this is it, black is actually poking at the shape that, uh, at this weird shape. If, if the stone was here, if the, if the stone was at a regular shape, uh, black wouldn't be able to bully this, gr this group at all. Like that group would be strong. But now, it, yeah, it has this obvious weakness and black is making use of that. And yeah, like even if you made that shape, okay, let's say you, you make that, you had to make that shape. But now, mm, connecting like this, making two empty triangles, two empty triangles, I, I don't know. I mean, I would do anything. I would, I would probably rather resign <laughs> than play this shape because it just feels so unpleasant. Um, I don't know. The, I just feel like when you, when you think a lot, like about shapes a lot, at some point, you have this almost uh, physical response to a bad shape. And I, 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 I clearly have a very physical response to a shape like this one. It is ugly, I agree, but I don't think I can afford to lose those two stones here. Well, um, well, it's actually hard to, I mean, it's hard to cut. Uh, I'm saying that if you, if you play something like this, you know, without, like without connecting, well, is black going to cut right now? Um, I don't know. Is he? Because after this, you know, the, the, this could happen. Who's under attack? I think it's black who's under attack here. So um, it's not easy for black to, I mean, it's easy to poke. It's easy to make this poking move, move but it's not easy to cut, actually. White is actually strong and uh, white has a lot of stones. Black only has one stone that's invading here. If you jump, then uh, cutting directly is not really working. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. If you jump, then it, it's not it's not really working. So black would would have to prepare this cut somehow. Not easy, not easy for black. But after this, black doesn't even have to worry about anything. Now, this in itself, this exchange uh, one for two, it's a such a perfect exchange for black. Black is just smiling in his heart and thinking that I mean, even even if black ends up losing the stone, this uh, one stone, it's already perfect. Black is already happy. Yeah, and also here, uh, probably, okay, here, black somehow ignored you, and I think that uh, you probably just need to take it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know why black ignores. Penny Dorcha, thank you, thank you for following. Hey, welcome. Um, I think you just have to take it. It's big, it's very big, uh, it makes your group alive. Um, I know it is painful to, uh, like, allow black this Atari, but I, I don't think you really have a choice here. Just take those stones and, and see what happens. Because after this, oh, whoa, I think maybe this is a misclick or something. Maybe a misclick. And you just take it. Yeah. But still, even here, uh, probably just ignore and take. Ignore and take. Because it feels like black has too many points now. And uh, after a few of the um, shape, slight shape mistakes here and there, black simply takes more. And uh, if you want to get a chance to, to make more territory in this game, you just have to find a way to tenuki, uh, ignore your opponent, and, and, and take the big moves. But yeah, like I said, uh, I don't think there was any, um, wow, 52 people on stream. Yeah, we were, um, we were raided. We were raided uh, by the Loving Sun, so uh, that's why they're probably still some of the people from, from, from that stream. Um, so I think it was a very well played game, even though it looks like a, like a loss in some shape moves and some shape mistakes. But overall, I'd say this is a very well um, played game. Uh, the, the, the opening was well played, a lot of the things were played correctly. But some of the shapes in the in the middle game uh, just kind of failed. 
and uh, is it game review now? Uh, Ksenia, no, this is not a game review. This is we're reviewing uh, games of our subscribers. This is the second game. We're done. Uh, thank you for submitting the games, Grandpa Frog and uh, Dr. Wanderer. Thank you. And uh, and Lord Milton V just followed. Thank you. Welcome to Go Magic. And uh, let me get back to. To this. All right, so um, I think I'll just take a sip of tea after playing games, after, re after reviewing games, and it's time to talk about Quantum Ship. <laughs> I've been I've been delaying this, like delaying this for as much as I could, but there's <laughs> it's impossible to de uh, to delay any further. So uh, Huan Long Shi, uh, um, probably my favorite. Where is the tea break? Well, uh, yeah, I have tea break. Uh, the tea break never ends on the Go Magic stream. And uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that we have this uh, wonderful magic roulette that we spin uh, for donations. And we'll probably uh, do something else with this roulette in the future. Uh, and yes, you guys are welcome uh, for, yeah, it, it was, it, 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 it's always fun to review some games live on stream. Unless, of course, they're like, 15 of them or something. And yeah, this is the roulette, and it goes like this. And we filled it with some, there's a Chinese lesson, there's I think there's a Russian accent somewhere, there's tea upgrade, there's telejoke, there's some uh, Go Magic coupons. So all kinds of stuff, and um, that's just going to be hiding down there below this, the screen for now. Now, let's talk about Huan Long Shi and uh, why I'm so excited about him. So. As you know, the, the Huan Longshu course is coming really, really soon. And um, like I said, it was really impossible to include everything I wanted because uh, there's just so many games of Huan Longshu that I really like personally. And I've reviewed them so many times. And I wanted to share to share them with you, but but just, I had to limit uh, the number of games to a certain, to a certain reasonable number <laughs> and uh, to, to uh, just to make it fit into a single course. And... Sometime in his life, uh, so Huang Longshi is considered to be one of the greatest players of uh, of old China. Um, there were probably two more players that we'll talk about sometime in the future that came right after him. But uh, um, in in the um, in the seventeenth century, Huang Longshi was definitely the greatest, and they and they say that his uh, strength uh, it matched the strength of uh, all of those Japanese players that we really admire. All of the Joa and Honibo Shusaku and, uh, and all of the Meijins. So uh, Huan Longshi was right there with them. And there was a series of games that uh, Huan Longshi played in his, um, in his life, closer to the end of his life. We don't really know exactly when he died. Uh, we know it was probably somewhere in his 40s. But at some point, um, he played a match against one of his uh, uh, one of the sh other strongest players uh, in China at that time. His name was uh, Xu Xinyou. And uh, at some point, Huang Shi told him that they had to, if, if they had to play an even match, it had to be played on three stones handicap, which is, of course, a huge humiliation because they were kind of considered to be of equal strength. And now one of them is saying, Huang Shi is saying that he could give the other three stones. And the match was played and... The result of this match and what happened in the match and some of the games in this match, I will share that with you in the course. But today, tonight, I'm going to be showing you a game um, which is not part of this of this match, but it's also a game played by Huang Shi and Xu Xinyo, and it's also played on three stones. So it's a three stone game between them, but it's not part of that match. I guess it's uh, they played a few more games. Um, I guess they played a few more games with those uh, three handicap uh, settings, and this game, even though it's not part of the, even though it's not part of the official match, but it's probably one of my personal favorites. So, uh, before we get to this, uh, I want to show you one more time to those who just joined us or to those who uh, didn't see the very beginning. Um, I wanted to show you the trailer, the, the, uh, the teaser trailer of the upcoming Holandshi course. Um, and let's just watch it one more time.
Here we go. Here's a story of a mysterious Chinese player from a distant past. You will see the style he had, the games he played, and the problems that he composed. This is ancient Chinese Go the way you've never seen it before. Those games were different. They were not so strategic and they were all about tactical complications, capturing races, running around, making shape, and fighting, 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 and more fighting. This is the story of Huang Mengshi. Yeah, there was a... Uh, mm. Thank you, thank you, yeah, this is great. Uh, yeah, this... Um, an intense trailer and some very intense fighting uh, is going to be in the course. Uh, trust me, because a, uh, most of the games at that time, they were not like the typical, traditional um, Japanese games that we grew up with. At that time, the games were full of like so much aggression and so much power and it was just it was just uh just tsuji over one more tsuji and one more tsuji and one more and one more all the, the entire game is just a, a, a one major fight or m multiple fights so in the world where weichi was just invented <laughs> yeah we have to make a trailer like this one yeah in the world we have to make the one of the famous in the world trailers definitely definitely but yeah, like I said before, uh, this is going to be the second historical course for Go Magic, and probably the last one for for a while because this was an experiment for us. We had a, a, an actual Japanese Go Bun with uh, slate and shell stones, and we thought, hell, why not? Let's make a, a historical course because I'm really passionate about Go history, and I like that. And uh, it, it's probably more fun for me to talk about that rather than uh, talk about uh, you know standard. Like basic life and death and uh, and and Tsuji. so we did this and we'll see how it goes. If you guys like this, if you don't, maybe you'll give us some suggestions on, or advice how to improve that. And the next historical courses we'll ever make sometime in the future are going to be maybe way better than this. But this was just an experiment for us. So let's take a look at uh, um, that game that Huang Shi played. And uh, and uh, let's jump into it and. I'm going to ask you some questions, so be prepared. During the game, um, I've, I've, I've prepared some questions for you guys, and we are going to be voting on the correct answer. Some of the, some of the questions are maybe even basic and should be solvable for like any even SDK or DDK uh, viewers out there. Some of the questions are a bit more tricky, so let's, let's take a look. Wait, let me open it first. So here we go. Oh, once again, Huang Shi is playing white, and uh, Xu Xingyo is playing black. And uh, just, I'm gonna just ask you to probably ignore uh, the opening because the opening that they played looks really different from anything that you are probably used to. Like ev anything that you've read in in those books when you started to play, anything that you've heard from YouTubers, anything that you've learned in your entire uh, lifetime of playing Go, this can be probably just dropped right into the garbage because the, these guys are going to be playing something entirely different. Take a look at this. So white attacks the corner, and oh, oh, also pay, uh, like notice that um, this. Imagine reading books. Yeah, and also uh, Black just played this 5-3 uh, and you know playing anything else uh, other than the the star point was very un unusual at that time and it was impossible because according to the rules at that time every even game would start with two diagonal uh, black stones and two diagonal white stones, uh, the star point stones. And so every game would start with four star points already in place. And, and and only in the handicap game, black is actually black and white are actually allowed to uh, start the game with anything other than the star point. So black plays 
this, this phi 3. I only see a pause stream arrow. Wait, you can't see the... Uh, You can't see the game? Stream works for me? OK. It works? Refreshing? Refresh your page. Uh, I can see the board in stones. Wait, what's happening? It's fine. OK, it's fine. Um, if it doesn't work, try refreshing the page. So uh, right, right off the bat, right off the bat, Holm she starts to attack. You see black takes the corner, ignores. Well, of course, black could have done this. but. Just a side note here. Uh, this match and, and uh, all, like all of these three stone games were very, very unpleasant and, and humiliating for for Xuxinyo, for Black, because uh, he has to not only win the game, but he has to prove that this this entire match, this the, this three stone handicap thing, is nonsense. He is a, a player of the same caliber as as Huang Shi, and and he cannot just start playing defensively like, oh, this is a handicap game. Huang Shi is teaching me, so I have to do, I have to just play passively and win the game uh, by uh, like seven points. But that's not what he, what he wanted to achieve in the game. So he wanted to attack and and defeat Huang Shi decisively. So he just bravely takes an empty corner and Huang Shi starts to attack. This attachment doesn't look very modern. But again, black is all connected. White jumps on one side, and of course, black attacks on the other. Natural. Um, today, we would probably say that the, the key point here is this one. But it's definitely not a mistake for, wait, how do I? Not a mistake to play here. Very nice shape from Huang Shi. And just see how, how natural, how how naturally his stones flow on the board. He's uh, extending. And at, at this point, the Joseki, this this is like this shape dictates that black should crawl inside. And that's what black does. But this kind of pushes Huang Shi, this pushes white to naturally connect uh, and protect the weakness. So white is all connected everywhere. White is not risking anything, even though this is a, a three-stone handicap game, but white is under no pressure so far. Again, very important Hane. Very, very important Hane. Like, and not extending here. Because extending feels OK, but at the same time, it, it helps it helps white, like black become stronger and stronger. So whenever you can Hane, Hane. Definitely, if you can. And in this case, you can. Strengthen the shape. And at this point, black plays here because black is probably thinking that the gate is this upper this upper group is getting surrounded there and white could strike an attack. But the game this is too early. This is too early to get so worried. And this black group is it just has more than enough space there to escape in any direction. So um, probably Xu Xinyo got scared too early here. And the key point here. Uh, is definitely to well to extend, since white couldn't play here, then black extends. This makes black so much stronger. And now, if white wants to attack, how is he going to do that? So anything that white plays here, like anything like this, black can always uh, just jump out. Black can always live there. So there's no there's no pressure at all. Like anything white plays, uh, like this or anything else, black always has um, something like, for example, white plays tendency. There's this move. There's any sort of um, like any sort of jumping out move. There are a lot of moves in the vicinity that black can use to escape out of there. But black decides to save them right now, which is fine too. But again, um, makes white a little bit stronger. White pushes. So white gets kind of everything. White becomes strong in the top. Yes, there are some weaknesses, but at the same time, well, 
Black could think of, for example, cutting here at some point. But it doesn't really hurt White that much. So White is probably going to connect, and White can easily live in the corner. And even if Black extends here, White will live. And this is still fine. This is still OK for White. So uh, here we get to the first question that I wanted to ask you. Um, black extends. And here, the computer actually suggests, uh, like before we even see what uh, white plays in the game, and in the game white will play something different, but the computer suggests uh, a very important move that uh, white, I think, never played in the game, but the computer thinks that this is really the key point, and white should play, like, white should take it now, or the next move, or the next move, or any, at any point he has a chance to do, it, to do that. So where is the key point? Take a vote. A, B, or C? Where's that computer, that, the, the key computer AI maneuver? The crucial point for, for white. B, I see some Bs, Cs. B as well. How will I see the results of this um, of the vote? Will I? Oh, I won't see them. Really? Wait, there's a. I can see the. Um, I can see the poll actually report. Oh, I can see the results here. Yeah. Actually, right now the results are all of the answers are tied. Exactly. Like uh, two people have voted for each one of the moves, which means that I've, um, I chose very good moves to, to, uh, to give you as options to confuse you. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I think many of these moves actually look like they could be tied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because um, a lot of these moves, um, yeah, there was, yeah, yeah, there was a button to click. But don't worry, there's going to be more Paul, so uh, it's, it's coming. Oh, C wins. Okay, C wins. And yeah, C definitely looks like a, 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 a move that the AI would suggest um, for sure, for sure. Uh, but uh, th this is something I, I, I just came up with off the top of my head. Uh, and B is, uh, well, even though it's a good shape, but it doesn't really help white that much, surprisingly. Good shape, but of course black will just uh, connect and it doesn't really help um, anybody here. But at the same time, um, A is the move that the computer really likes. Because the thing is, this the, the the entire white group, this this group on the right is not settled yet, and AI probably believes that uh, settling this group first, while actually taking points in the corner, is very important and it's urgent. Settle it now, now and now that white is settled, white can think of uh, invading, attacking, doing anything. But before before that. At any point, if, uh, if, if let's say white plays any, anywhere else, like let's say here, and then at some point later, black will block here, now suddenly white is left here without a base. White doesn't have two eyes yet, and white will be forced to escape somewhere and fight. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, yes, what AI is that? Well, I'm talking about, uh, I was using cat train uh, most of the time. So um, this is cat train, which means cat go. Uh, is it using group tax rules? No, it's not, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the, I, this is something that I will talk about in the course, but I haven't mentioned it here. But yes, of course, there were group tax rules, which means that they had to try and make as few groups as possible on the board, as I, if I understand it correctly. And every additional uh, group that they had at the end of the game would, uh, would be taxed at uh, two points. So they would have to pay two points for that. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, what a group tax rule, I think I just explained that. 
Okay, uh, can I post links? Uh, yes, you can. Definitely, you can. If they are uh, related to uh, group tax and to these gains, sure. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's the one. So this is the one that um, uh, the, this is the rule set that was used at that time. And this might be the reason why some of their decisions were different from the decisions uh, even suggested by AI. Because obviously AI is not following uh, the, uh, this group tax. But even then, I, I think that uh, this A move is, uh, it's really not obvious. And in the game, I really wouldn't be looking at that point as well. I mean, I mean, I can understand why a lot of you haven't really voted for that. Because it really doesn't look like a very urgent move. And surprisingly, it is. But in the game, uh, white attaches here first. And after, the, after these exchanges, black needs to connect. Otherwise, black is going to be cut off. And after these exchanges, white makes a very interesting probing move. This. Jumping right inside, uh, hitting that shape uh, right there. And this is something that we see all the time in, uh, well, in all levels of, at all levels of Go. And black responds like this with an empty triangle. Um, the computer actually thinks that it, it is better for, for black to, to play something like this and just not be afraid of this. There's no, there's no cut. Even if white cuts, there's, there's nothing that white can do there. So right now, there's nothing. But there's Aji. That stone is there. It's not going to die there just for nothing. We're going to save this private Ryan. So white can later, uh, white can maybe Tanuki for now. But in the future, or maybe even now, white will be able to play something like this, attach. And this is what AIs really like. And now the stone inside is going to be like poisoning black's position. Black cannot really attack very severely uh, without worrying about that white stone inside. So uh, anything like this, and white will be able to honey and uh, probably do something and get something out of it. If black wants to eliminate the Aji of that stone, Black can do this, but in, but in this case, of course, white's going to just live here in the corner, just to, to steal the corner from black. So this is probably something that Huan Shi would have played if, um, if, if black had played like this. But in the game, black got a little bit scared, intimidated, and responded with an empty triangle, which allows white to jump very lightly and beautifully. And then this is a shape move. And the reason for that is uh, it will become obvious in just about a second. Because now, this move is actually a mistake. Uh, black should have done something with the Aji, because uh, this move actually takes a liberty, this, uh, this last move that white played. It takes a liberty and prepares what's coming next. Prepares what uh, Xu Xingyou missed in the game. Taking the corner like this feels so, so good. The corner is huge, but at the same time now, where is white going to play? Next comes the Tsuji, which is like the only move. And Huang Shi plays um, and finds that move in the game. So where would you play? A, B, C, or D? I get it. I think I can actually see the result of the vote live here. OK. A couple people voted for C. Everybody's voting for C. What's happening there? C, such a good move. Nobody wants to surround A. OK, somebody wants to surround with A. OK. We have a, a power shift. More people voting for A, okay. Hey, can I vote too? Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to. Okay, someone just voted for D, okay. Another shape move. So all, all of these, they, they seem to be like shape moves. And uh, to be able to make the right choice here actually requires um, very precise 
reading and calculation, which you don't really have time to do um, while you're watching this stream live with me. So uh, it's a bit of an unfair question. I'm asking you to just estimate very quickly what is the best move here. So um, do we have to end the vote every time? or? So yeah, the winner is uh, C, and C is indeed the correct answer. This is what Juan she actually played in the game. So white cuts, and after this cut, there's, n there's no way for black to save everything. Uh, there's no way to uh, just kill white unconditionally here. So white, black will play Atari. Uh, what happened? White KGS. I'm sorry, I, I went for a walk with Gina. Uh, well, we're showing on KGS because uh, for some reason uh, the game could not be displayed in an OGS. I, I can open it, but I can't, uh, I can't see the game. There's, there's no game inside, even though it is. So we had to make a, a quick fix with KGS. So after this, when white extends here, see, um, black shape is so weak, so many cutting points. So there's no way that black can just kill like this. I mean, this would be lovely, right? This would be lovely to capture like this. But of course, now white can simply Atari. And then this is a ladder. So impossible. So black has to connect like this. And now a sequence of perfect moves from Huan Longxi, of course, crawling on the first line and killing the those two black stones. And a probing move in the corner first. And now the black connects. Now this, this, this stone will remain here for a while, but later in the game, white can, of course, always start moving it and, well, steal that corner. But that's going to come later. For now, white takes the corner. Black approaches, and a very modern-looking Joseki is played, unusually. Uh, again, because 5-3 uh, and 3-4 uh, were not played usually at that time, so this sort of Joseki was probably unheard of. Uh, and yet, they just played this Joseki right there uh, in a handicap game, which is something that we play these days. So white, uh, white presses, black crawls, white extends, jump, cut, push once, a cut, black takes, white will atari, black takes, and here one more simple question for you. Next, uh, white needs to finish this Joseki. I mean, what's the point of this? All, all, all those second line sacrifices. So white sacrificed uh, one stone, and now white needs to finish finish this off with a bang, with a, with a beautiful move. So what is the move? Uh, where should white play right now? I think this, is, this question is significantly easier, but nevertheless, let's vote. Anton, maybe you shouldn't vote. I would say if you if you if you've seen the um, uh, the course that Alexander Dunstein did, <laughs> then this answer is going to be even easier for you. Okay, just everyone is just voting for for B, and I am yay yes voting indeed, and I'm so happy that you did because this of course B is the correct answer. Thank you for voting. Uh, B is correct. This is the nose attachment to Suji, and you should remember that in this sort of situation, when there's a stone on the second line, of course we're not saving the stone, because this will only help, even if you can, even if you can save it, but crawling like this is never a good idea. Unless it is, of course. So uh, this attachment is a really good to Suji. Because now, if black wants to, uh, if, if black takes it, then white will cover, and white has a strong wall. But in the game, and this is actually what typically happens, usually uh, black would just take it, just take those points, and allow white to build this wall. But Xu Xingyo is not that, uh, is not that sort of player, so he moves out, allows white to connect, and more fighting. Black pushes, white has to live. Hane. Again, as soon as there's a chance to Hane, Hane. I mean, 
crawling on the third line definitely feels okay, but this is still a handicap game, and you can you can kind of guess that of course even though uh, White got some profit on the um, on the right, but White is still a little bit behind in this game. White is still not winning. At the beginning of the game, uh, if if there's a three stone advantage, AI shows that uh, it's about thirty points. About thirty points of advantage. Of course, it's like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of uh, win rate, but it's about 30 points of uh, point advantage. And right now it's definitely smaller, a lot smaller actually, because of those mistakes on the right. But um, uh, it's still not, not quite uh, even yet. So white still needs to continue and push, 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 and uh, attack, attack more. So white plays Hane. More pressure on black. And this way, white is taking for, uh, white is taking territory on the fourth line, which is of course bigger. And this is uh, Sente against the corner. Otherwise, the corner could die if black doesn't respond. Another extension, and this is against Sente. Everything is in Sente, and white invades. Here um, is an interesting point. So uh, black pushes here once, and then this. White plays here. White establishes a base at the bottom. And the interesting thing is that, well, in the game, uh, Black played this attacking move, which was really, really popular uh, back uh, in the 16th century China. Or the 17th century? 17th century. Uh, but this maneuver, because uh, it's a second line move, and it's not going to kill White for sure. It's you very often criticized, like when, when you play like this, uh, AI very, very often criticizes you for this. So uh, I've definitely played more than enough of this sort of moves in my own games before. But now every time I'm thinking of that I should play on the second line, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe is there a better move here? So, uh, and actually there is, there is a better move here. Uh, because black has this simple looking move first. And the problem with this for white is that white can't even play away. White can't just tenuki. This move definitely makes black thicker. Black becomes more solid. The wall is bigger and stronger. And at the same time, white cannot just ignore this move. So for example, if white plays this, let's say white takes that point and uh, makes more territory at the bottom. Now, there is a tesuji. There's a shape move for black on the left which white should have prevented, actually. And so where is that shape move? Can you guess? So where would you play as, as, as black right now? White just ignored you, and he was supposed to respond, and now you have to punish. Yeah, a lot of those moves, I. I I put them all close, and they all seem like a um, like a shape. Actually, I think each one of those four options looks like a shape move, but you have to pick one of them. And yeah, you really make me happy here. Uh, everybody's going for most people are going for their their correct the correct option. Yes, uh, most people voted for B, and B is indeed when you have this uh, like three stones like this, and playing in the middle, in the middle symmetrically like this, is indeed the best option. So black should and would probably play here in the game, and this just hits this final point, and it's just so so painful. I just vote only B. Yeah, yeah, yeah B, of course. Um, because this is, is so hard for, for white to answer. Like, if, if white simply connects, mm, well, black will just uh, save the stone, and now white is not even alive there. Again, if, even if white plays here, there's this connection, which threatens um, a, a snapback. And um, if, if white saves it, then this move probably kills the left group. Impossible to save. Dying. Very, very unpleasant. And if, by the way, if, if white tries to play this, which seems like it's going to work and it's going to cut it, like cut black uh, 
but black will cut like this and there's nothing there's nothing white can do against this white's shape is bad white has an empty triangle here again see empty triangles are almost never almost never good so white can atari and it seems like black can't connect black can't there's a ladder but black is not going to connect black will play here and um, this is it white captures there's this a very very uh, unfortunate shape here for white so this this would have been a disaster but in the game black attacked here um, not uh, not attacking the, this left group and this allowed white to uh, reinforce the shape later but um, even then uh, this group the black uh, I mean the this move the black played in the game is not a bad move at all because it's still attacking it's reinforcing the corner it's making the corner bigger it's turning it into territory and at the same time it's attacking the white bottom group which is also very very big and this white bottom group is not very strong and uh, if if white is not careful it can easily get under attack so let's see what happens next white needs to uh, somehow manage it because if white just uh, plays like here for example to fix the shape then definitely black could just uh, uh, attack like this no ice like no eye shape here white would have to escape but where black is strong everywhere around here this would be difficult so white needs to uh, help this bottom group first Hane Atari push one black attacks immediately and it seems like white really doesn't have any eye space here white doesn't have enough space to live and, and yet this attacking move allows white to and obviously white was planning this right from the start when when white played this Hane at uh, f4 now white has a Tsuji that, that he played in the game so where should white play right now This is something uh, a, a little something that we sometimes play in in the end game. This is a sort of end game tsuji that can come in handy. And here, Huangshi uses this tsuji to help his group get out of trouble. So where would you play? As white. Let me see. Okay, there's one vote for A. Okay, then now there are two votes for C. Okay. Someone voted for A, someone voted for D. Hmm. And Tom, where would you play? That's how you know it's a good question. I'd play C. Yeah, I just, lo I just love it when you manage to confuse people so much that all of the, all of the options actually look plausible they all look reasonable and it's really difficult to choose the best one but actually there is one which is um, a, a lot better than all the others that is really a good question then and yes uh, I, I I put D in there just to confuse you guys obviously D is not not, not the move it's not going to help white in any way at this point so of course it has to be a move on the left and the correct answer here is uh, C you're Oh, we're tied with uh, with B and C, but yeah, B. Um, well, B wouldn't work because Black would just uh, bend like this, take the stone, and White is still facing the same difficulty that, as before. Uh, this this uh, attachment doesn't really help White at all. However, this Hane uh, does help because now Black needs to save the stone. White bends. And this Atari, we can extend with Atari. And now this, and this allows us to, uh, yes, white loses the two stones, but white manages to get a connection. Look, this Atari, black takes. And before connecting on the first line, just in case, we throw in to make a, a worse shape for black. And now a connection. And since black is hoping to attack, uh, this white group in the future, black doesn't want to just uh, tenuki here. So black 
connect in this ugly looking dumpling shape. But again, all of this is done to hopefully keep white under pressure and uh, attack in the future. A jump, a perfect sequence here again, according to AI. Magic, real magic here, yeah. Push, again, uh, it's actually still, uh, white is still under pressure. So white managed to get out of the really difficult situation, but still there is pressure. This attachment is again, the best move. And this, Atari, black connect, white connect. White is still, now white is alive on the left. And white has uh, uh, one eye at the bottom, but there's no, like white is not cleanly alive. It's not clearly alive here yet. So there is still some, some sentient moves around here that black can use in the future to somehow uh, attack white and to, to, to gain more territory for himself. Again, this is something we've seen before and I didn't ask you to vote here because I knew that if you if you saw the first one then you would definitely guess the now this move as well because this is the same the exact same shape again uh, very well played from Shushinyo attacking white white doesn't want to lose these stones this would be too big the game is actually very close right now uh, it's still a little bit in 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 black's favor black is still winning but um, if, if white now gives the four stones up, then uh, white is not going to win the game. So white has to save them like this, ugly. And Shushinyo gets to, uh, to reduce the upper side. White defends. And this move. This move is, it, it's one of those moves that uh, we've talked about, I think, in in the end game course, and we've talked about is definitely in the end game. When the game gets closer, it's, I mean, nobody's safe from this sort of uh, typical mistake, so to speak, because the center always looks so alluring. It looks so tempting to just take those, t like those center points, it, it's so big. And at the same time, this is not the best decision. Black has a chance here to uh, play a better move because this white group at the, at the bottom is still sort of weak and black can push it and pressure it and probably win the game here. So instead of just taking those points in the center and giving the initiative to white, black could push here. Of course, white, could, uh, white would block. And then look at this. What a beautiful suggestion from AI. Cut. Of course, white can take it cut and extend. So this way we're also making points. We're also making territory. Now this bottom right corner has gotten significantly bigger, stronger and thicker. And at the same time, um, white, this white group is, it's become even thinner. Like in the future, if, um, if, if white doesn't do anything here, in the future, black can poke here, right? And this, this threatens to, well, connect. And then this would take away the eye, right? And then, so this would leave white with almost no eye space here. Quite dangerous. Let's go back to the game. In the game after this, black responds. And this is the time when Hualanshi has to start using the Aji of that single white stone that he put there so early in the opening, finally it is time. Uh, white is not entirely strong on the left yet, but he simply has no time to defend. He has no time to, uh, if white now just adds a move here, which is very good, very big, but of course this would give black enough time to uh, strengthen the corner, play something like this, and black probably wins the game. So white starts this um, desperate, a maneuvering inside, trying to live. Black, of course, tries to kill. And this is, um, Black probably could have uh, avoided answering, but yeah, it feels very, very, very big. And at the same time now, this first line move seems like the smallest move in the game, but it, it's actually sente. If, um, if Black doesn't respond to this, White could cut. And even if Black responds like this, white could still cut. 
and uh, then white would capture some of the stones, right? White captures here, white could uh, Atari, and some of black stones are going to be captured. So how, however small this move seems, black needs to respond with this, which is, uh, of course, very annoying for black. And now, trying to live, black jumps inside, takes away white's uh, eye space. White clearly doesn't have enough space for making eyes there, for making two eyes, at least. And now white needs to come up with a way to somehow make those two eyes appear out of nowhere. So where would you play as white right now? The computer actually agrees with Huangxi here and believes that the move that white played next is the only, pretty much the only option. C looks cool. Yeah, it does. Then vote for it. B, okay, okay. This doesn't really look very easy for white at all. And uh, I mean, saving groups is never easy. And like saving, and now that white has two groups that he has to save, that's not um, a very simple thing. And uh, if I had this position right now as white, I would probably, I mean, I would definitely lose this because um, managing the left group and the right group at the same time, making them both live, and while also reducing the black territory is no easy matter. But Huangxi manages to do just that. So what do we have there? We have uh, most people voting for... Most people voted for the cool move at C, and you are correct. Congratulations. C looks like it's doing something. Yeah, A, well, A could be doing something. It pushes and, and makes black weaker. And of course, D is just out of the question. This, this bumping move is just so crude. So yeah, the C attachment is the best. I think it's impossible to leave or escape here. Uh, to, to live um, well, yeah, it looks very much impossible. Looks uh, much better for black, actually. Black, black seems to be strong here. So it feels like black should be able to manage this and kill something and finish the game right there. So let's see. Black bumps. And uh, at this point, again, and, and this is one more AI suggestion, AI thinks that this is actually, um, again, a very, very good move. This, this move is such an important point. Remember we talked about it before, black could have crawled there, but even now, instead of cutting, which is really counterintuitive, it, it feels like you really need to cut here, but even then, crawling here, and if, let's say, white connects, but then this Hane is incredibly painful. It threatens a cut here, and also, like, even if connects like this, black gets alive here, white is all split, very, very, very dangerous. Black would be winning this game here. So, black cuts in the game, white extends. This mm, increases the amount of black's liberties, Otherwise, white would be able to play here and black would just die there. So this, of course. And now this as well. Sente. White has to extend. And now here. And it feels like black is winning this capturing race. And if it feels like that, then you're right. Because black should be winning this capturing race. Uh, black definitely has more liberties than the white group on the right. So what white could potentially get out of this is... Um, White could uh, sacrifice this, uh, those stones on the right and solidify, just by sacrificing them, solidify the, the left-hand group and then continue to play this endgame. So playing here is fine. Make shape. And uh, actually the computer here believes that just, just sacrifice. Just block and uh, let, let black capture. So fine. White makes a shape here at the Suji. 
here, white has to connect. And after this exchange, this was a mistake. So black's trying too hard to capture, but probably black didn't read this capture and race very carefully. So uh, what black has to do, and this, is, this has to do with the principle that uh, if you have an eye and your opponent doesn't, then you have the advantage. And when both players have eyes, then it's usually the player who has a bigger eye who's going to win. So um, in this case, instead of crawling on the first line, it, it would be better for Xu Xinyo to simply play this and get himself a bigger eye. And this, well, if white now wants to kill black, then white would have to play this, right? And at the same time, after this, black has so many liberties that black can just connect. Take, uh, take away this liberty and black wins this capturing race. And if black wins this, maybe black wins the game. Maybe not, this is still going to be a very close end game, but this would definitely give black a lot of chances in the game. However, in the game, black went, uh, went for this crawling move, and uh, let's see how this panned out. This is a ko, and of course, a ko gives Huang Shi a lot of hope because now he can play a lot of ko threats, and uh, even if he loses that ko, but he gets to play two moves somewhere else on the board, that's probably going to be good enough. And this is exactly what will happen, actually, as you will see. A ko threat, a ko threat as well to live. Ko, take it. Atari, black connects, ko, ko threat, white connects, here, and um, well, this is probably, the computer thinks that actually this ko, uh, white can just continue playing this because white still has uh, aggressive ko threats, white still has moves like this one, for example, uh, but it doesn't really matter because this move is incredibly big, and if white is allowed to, so black connects, and Black could have captured this group just for nothing, but now Black captures this group and allows White to get the entire upper right corner. And that means that White is actually ahead in the game on points right now. And probably the only possible hope that White could have, that Black could have in this game right now is maybe to somehow still attack this, uh, this lower White group. Because white still doesn't seem to have two clear eyes there, right? Uh, what, white has a, a false eye at d1, another one at g1, another one at h3, a lot of false eyes. And, but white, of course, makes this move and doesn't even care to respond after this. White just goes straight for, just, just very, very directly to, for reducing the center. One reduction, another one, another one. Another one. So white gets everything. Uh, yeah, white is alive. But uh, actually, uh, well, in the game, black played um, here, and uh, white just lived. But uh, actually, like this, this move doesn't allow white to make an eye here. Uh, Shishinyo didn't play this, but uh, um, if if black played here, let's imagine that black had played this move and uh, white connects, boom, this is uh, um, another Tsuji and white doesn't have an eye here. So what would uh, white, what would white do this, like, like in this situation? White has a lot of false eyes, no eye in the center. Where would white, where would white, like where could white play here right now? What do you think? I, I don't have any options here, so, uh, a3 says uh, Mike, and A3 says uh, Battle Porridge. And yes, you guys are uh, correct, of course. A3 is the move, <laughs> of course, because this is Sente for connection. And if black plays here, then white uh, makes two eyes in the corner. So this means that Huang Shi wins the game no matter what, even if black manages to play a correct Tsuji in the center. But in the game, black played here, and white just made two eyes right there. And that's the end of this game. Um, very simply, without uh, just making beautiful shapes, playing correct Tsujis, and not making any mm, 
any significant mistakes in this game, Hollandshire wins a three handicap game against uh, the player who would uh, very soon after his death become uh, like reach the level of Guoshou in China. And, and Guoshou means the, the level of like the top ranking player in the country. Only the best players in China would reach this level. And Holland she just defeated him with three stones handicap, which is just shows you how amazing he actually was. Gee. <laughs> All right, that's it with the game. And uh, and uh, yeah, the this is still not part of the blood and tears. And uh, if you want to see the actual blood and tears, you you. You're gonna to have to wait for the course because uh, it's impossible, unfortunately, to analyze all ten of the Blood and Tears games and just show you everything there because those games are just—they they have so much in them that uh, what I just did here and it's—it's—it's uh, it's it's probably even the shortened version of what I did in the course because in the, in the course I gave more details, more variations, more like uh, of the suggestions from professionals and from AIs and my own personal opinions for what it matters, uh, for what it's worth. So, um, yeah, those are sick, sick moves. <laughs> awesome looking games. Do you ever plan to go over the uh, over these games against uh, Zhou Dong Ho? Uh, well, I did in the course as well. Of course, Zhou Dong Ho was one of his biggest opponents in his life, and uh, they played a lot of games. There's like uh, at least 25, I think, out of all of uh, 107 of Polish's games, I think 25 or even more were played against Jono Ho. So a lot. And those are really, really cool as well. And uh, I've showed a couple of them. I showed a couple of them in the course. And, um, and also two of the Blood and Tears games uh, made it into the course. I picked, well, I just picked the best ones I could. But again, all 10 of them are absolutely miraculous and if you ever have time we will include them into the course so you'll be able to uh to review all 10 of them by yourself while two of them will be reviewed in the course so it's it's a must see and i i highly encourage you that it's not something that will make you probably stronger but uh taking your time to patiently review those games um just set in, set them up on the board and maybe we maybe even spend like, I don't know, half a day or a day on, on one game. I guarantee you that it's definitely worth it because when you get so much, like so deep in this, in, in those Asian games, it is so gratifying to see the reasons behind, um, behind, behind the moves that uh, Xu Xinyo came up with and the moves that Hollow Shi uh, uh, played in the game. Um, sounds like I should get the course. Yeah, you probably should. Uh, if you, if you like Go History, then this is probably for you. If if you're, uh, I I know a lot of people also that uh, they've commented that uh, these courses don't really teach much. And even though I tried as much as I could to provide some commentary and give some helpful suggestions from those ancient games, but yeah, uh, from the point of view of uh, the teaching material, it's definitely less efficient than taking some of the typical mistakes or the end game or the opening course. But yeah, if you like the stories, then it is fun. Where do you get SGFs? Um, well, they're available online. It's just that, it's just that we, will, we will select them for you and we will, we will include them in the course. So we'll do all the work for you. Now learning is for nerds. Yeah, well, I, had my, I spend my fair share of hours uh, learning Go. Uh, but I also enjoy not learning it and just sitting and browsing the game for hours and just trying to get into it and understand what was happening there. I just like old games. Well, me too. My voice and my th and my throat is getting sour. So, uh, <clears throat> which means that we'll probably have to finish it very, very soon. But, hmm, any book recommendations on way to history? Well, um, <laughs> well, uh, there's not a lot. I, I, I mean, I, I know that there's um, there are a few books written by John Fairbairn, I think, um, on some of the famous uh, matches played in history before. So you could look into that. 
try to find those. Um, and I've, I, I like uh, me, I haven't read a lot of the actual books, but I've been researching information like from uh, just by bits and pieces everywhere on the internet. So um, I actually haven't read a, a, a lot of good history, go history books myself. So if you, uh, anyone watching this live stream could recommend some very good go history books, uh, that would be very good as well. And I would, uh, I would really appreciate that because I would like to read something as well. My favorite old book is this one. What about uh, John? Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll open it later, um, but thank you for the suggestion. Uh, well, actually, wait, I can probably... Path to Go by Yabo Zhang. Well, I've, um, I've never heard of this one. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, John Fairburn, uh, I, I just mentioned him, yes. But uh, other than him, uh, I don't think there's anything, like any good, uh, re like real uh, comprehensive Go history books. There are a few books which are like, like uh, just like a history book. Like a almost like a textbook uh, at school, where just the facts are stated in chronological order, and but you don't. It, it's not the kind of book that you want to take with you on the couch and just read it, and relax. Shi Xiangxia and uh, Fang Xiping both wrote books. You should check them out. Wait, Shi Xiangxia and Fang Xiping. Uh, uh, Fang Xiping. You mean those the those uh, old Chinese players? Yeah, these are the, the guys that I met that I wanted to mention. That these are the the players that we would probably, if we ever get back to making his, historical courses, we would probably have to make a course about them as well. The Danghu guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Um, yeah, if we ever get back to uh, the historical courses, we'll definitely need to research more on them and uh, see their game. I haven't seen a lot of their games. I've seen some of them, and yes, they're incredible. And uh, those games on Danghu Lake, for sure, for sure. And of course, the Dosaku, uh, Dosaku games, and uh, I mean, Honibo Shusaku, and, um, and everything else. So uh, yeah, guys, I think it's time to uh, um, call it uh, a night. It is really late here. Uh, so let me see if we, could, uh, if we could raid somebody. Wait, do we have it in the browser? Mike, do we have it in the browser, the, the rating option? Sorry? The raid option, do we have it in the browser? We had it last time. Oh, okay. Drank tail just followed. Oh, thank you for following. Last minute followers. Wait, Telegram. Okay. Oh, actually, um, yeah, actually, Tree Rope is doing a a um, uh, a, re a review right now, and I think uh, it will be more than suitable for you guys to uh, to. To go and watch what he's doing because it, I think it's very much in the same vein and, and he's doing the same like similar sort of um, uh, game reviews. Uh, he's reviewing Dosaku and and uh, and Huang Shi as well, so it's really cool. So uh, with this, I will say goodbye and uh, I'll see you guys next week for the American tournament commentary. I'll be commentating around the same time uh, next Saturday. Uh, and I will announce that we'll announce that uh, a bit later as well. And that's going to be round one of the tournament. And I'll see you guys next time. And the raid begins now. See ya.